Hi guys and welcome back. Today I want to talk a bit about figuring out what subject matter you want to work in, what style you want. I have been really trying to focus down on this the past uh, several months, maybe half a year. I've been thinking about it for several years now, but I haven't really gotten to a point that I felt like I was making active progress on understanding what I actually wanted to do so that I could be really engaged and satisfied with the work that I was doing. And uh, I wanted to talk a bit about this actually relatively easy technique to start understanding what you personally find really interesting and engaging in artwork. And basically the technique is coming to a point where you have about five words written down that describe your ideal style. And uh, I love writing lists, so this works really well for me to be able to think through that, but there's a few different ways that you can go about doing this. I originally got this kind of a concept of how to figure out what you actually want in your work from the artist Gavin Gray Valentine. I absolutely love his work, so I highly recommend you go check it out. But he talked about this technique a little bit about really just distilling down what, what again, what you're really excited and passionate about, what you love seeing in artwork, what you love putting in your own artwork, and then arriving at a point where it is just this short little list. And then the idea is that as you start a new piece, you will take out that list and then you'll either make sure that you have like two or three that's on the list, two of those elements in that piece. If it's missing those elements, then it's probably not going to hit the mark for you. It's probably not going to be a piece that you feel fulfilled by or excited by. And uh, yeah, I've been really wanting to get to a point where every single piece that I do is just, it's just getting there. It's making me feel satisfied and like I'm going in a direction that, that I want. And a lot of times I've made pieces that just did not fit into what my my image of what I wanted my entire portfolio to be or what kind of artist I wanted to be. So I found that there's a few different ways that you can go about starting this process of getting a list. For me, I wanted to start with a larger list that I could start whittling away at and narrowing down. And ultimately also this end goal of having five words in a list, that does not have to be your permanent list. That's what's really exciting about this is that as you work on things and develop, you can decide that a certain word really isn't working with what you actually want to do. Or maybe there's a different word that works better and you can just switch those out and then it just evolves with you as you work through it. But, but anyways, back to the beginning, there are a few different ways that I've found that work well for getting ideas for what kind of concepts you want to put on your list. So you can either start looking at your own work, which I actually think you should probably do both of these two methods, but you can look at your artwork and find the pieces that you are most happy with, that you just felt really spoke to you and that you were telling the story that you wanted and it just felt like you were really achieving a kind of subject matter that you want to create more of. And then it's helpful to look through that and break down what were the specific elements in the piece. Was it really atmospheric? Was there a very specific kind of a background that made you feel a certain feeling? Is there certain types of characters in there? What were the emotions that you felt that you felt when you were working on that, but also that you want the viewer to feel when they're looking at it? So there's all sorts of different ways you can break that down. And the more pieces that you look at that that you love, that you feel like really achieved something, the more you can start getting this, this list, this idea, and the more that you see things reoccur in different pieces, those are the ones to really pay attention to. If you find that, that your pieces that have a specific feeling of magic in them, that that is something that ends up occurring in a lot of your pieces that you're really happy with. And that's probably a piece to make sure or a word to make sure that's written down. You probably put a little star next to it so you can remember that. And the second part to this is looking at other artwork, artwork from other artists that you love the feeling of, you love what they're achieving and start breaking those down. It's a very similar process, almost exactly the same actually, of just looking for those repeating elements that you find really inspiring and exciting and it makes you want to create artwork and then start writing them down. If you find that maybe you see that element only in a single piece and then everything else that you love doesn't really have that element, then it may not be one that 
needs to be on the list. It may be something you can remember to experiment with in the future, but, but I tend to like to look for things that are really significant in the work that I love, in the work that I create that ends up reoccurring quite a bit. So I like to gather all that up into kind of a rough draft list. I'll go ahead and read mine really quick if you're interested, but I just had things written down like mysterious, moody, rainy slash misty, eerie, mystical, spooky, magical. And you'll notice a lot of these have very similar feelings to them or meanings. And I had like uh, autonomous, stormy, atmospheric, dark and colorful, ominous. So there were a lot of things that, that again, just felt like they could be a little bit more concise. And that's what I wanted. I wanted my final list to have just really impactful words that that brought all of those feelings together so that each word had its own feeling, its own thing. It's, it brought its own thing to the table so that when I'm looking at that, I have five distinct elements so that when I'm ready to sit down and create a piece of artwork, I can look at that, think about it. How can I incorporate it into a piece or how can I make sure that that piece really is fitting into several of those categories? And after I got that list down, I, I gave myself some time to look at it, think about it, consider it, consider what it actually meant to put that kind of element in my work or when I have done that. And that helped me to just think about, well, what things that I write down weren't really well suited for what I actually enjoy and what things were, were perfectly describing that. So, so my final list is actually currently, I think it'll definitely adapt, like I said, and that's what I want. I want it to be able to adapt as I figure things out, as I work through things and figure out more things that I'm excited about painting. But, but anyways, currently I have atmospheric, spooky, dark and colorful. I have that as one because I consider it a, a give and take kind of a thing, but mysterious and autonomous. And uh, yeah, I really like that. I, I love each element of it and it feels like it's bringing something else to the table that when I'm creating artwork, it gives me these ideas to work off of. And I think that that's what makes this, this process so insightful and exciting is that when we're thinking about just what do, what do I want to draw? What do I want to be when I'm an artist? Like that is such a huge undertaking to figure out. There's so many elements out there and so many things to explore and to work through. And this gives a concrete starting point, something that can develop with you as you work, as you figure it out. And uh, I love that. I love being able to look at this list and know that every word on there is something that I find truly inspiring. So even though I'll develop and change as an artist, I know that in this moment, if I look at this, that's me, that, that shows a representation of, of what I hope to be, what I have achieved. And it's, it's really exciting to be able to feel like, like there's something concrete that does represent what I would like to be. So for this piece, I, I actually think that it does achieve everything on the list, which is exciting and fun. It wasn't actually one that I intended to like, make sure that everything was checked off, but, but in the end it, it did kind of satisfy all of those things. But but like I said earlier, when I'm working on a piece, I, I like to make sure that there's at least two of these elements represented in that work. And that helps it to make sure that it's, it's fitting on theme with what I actually want to do. But then it also allows for variation. It means that not everything is going to feel exactly the same every time. There will just be similar themes throughout. And this one, I felt like was a good example of being able to talk about this concept because I, I don't think that I would have worked on this type of piece in my recent past if I hadn't gone through this process of working through what I really love drawing. I got really far away from, from things that I used to love drawing and I, I lost my way a bit. So being able to go through this and clarifying things has helped me to get to a point where where I can sit down and sketch something out and it feels right and then I'll compare it to this list and then it's like, yeah, it, it's it's working. It's where I want it to be. So for this, it uh, it has the atmosphere that I want, which, which I've been really trying to focus on lately. I want it to feel like these characters are part of a world and I want that world to feel almost immersive for the viewer. And I want it to feel like autumn, like this fall time almost coziness, coldness. I love that, that dichotomy of, 
of how fall actually feels. So I was hoping that this would achieve that a little bit. And, and she's a ghost, so she's spooky. And and I love that element of getting back to that and and showing a little bit more of this. It's not really creepy, but more of a macabre element in my artwork. And I do have this print available at my shop. There's a link down in the description. So if you wanted to get this ghostly print for yourself, then and that's where you check that out. Um, but I also have a link to my Patreon. I want to give a massive thank you to all of my amazing patrons over on Patreon. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for your support over there. And uh, yeah, that's it for today. So I'll be back next time with some more art. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you then.